Oh, come on. You do, you do. Uh, the, only, the only thing that uh, is the old knees can't play football like they used to. In fact, I've had a lot of trouble with this right knee, in fact. Rod Stewart is a British rock and pop singer, songwriter and record producer. Born and raised in London, he's of Scottish and English ancestry. With his distinctive raspy singing voice, Stewart's one of the best-selling music artists of all time, having sold over 250 million records worldwide. He has had 10 number one albums and 31 top 10 singles in the UK, six of which reached number one. Stewart's had 16 top 10 singles in the US with four reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. He was knighted in the 2016th Birthday Honors for services to music and charity. Stewart won a Brit Award in 1993 for outstanding contribution to music. In 2004, he won his first Grammy for best traditional pop vocal album with Stardust the Great American Songbook, Volume 111. America, one of those leg casts. I remember like, seeing you in Big yeah. Foot, yeah. Yeah. which was a novelty for five or ten minutes, and it really started getting on my nerves because mm. it was stopping some of my finer. If you enjoy these videos, please remember to hit the like button, as it does help us out a lot. And comment below who your favorite celebrity is that you'd love to see in an upcoming video. His full name is Roderick David Stewart, but is also known as Rod the Mod. He was born January 10, 1945 in London, England, making him 76 at the time of this production. He stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall or 1.78 centimeters. In between making music and playing live, Sir Rod has been working on a massive, intricate model of a U.S. city for the past 23 years. He unveiled it as part of an interview with Railway Modelers magazine. He then phoned in to Jeremy Vine's BBC Radio 2 show to rebuff the host's suggestion he'd not built it himself. I would say 90% of it I built myself, he insisted. The only thing I wasn't very good at, and still am not, is the electricals, so I had someone else do that. Sir Rod has released 13 studio albums and been on 19 tours the time it took to build the city, which is modeled on both New York and Chicago around 1945. Stewart's had a notoriously active love life. He's the father of eight children with five different women. His first child, Sarah Streeter, was born when Stewart was 18 years old, and the couple decided to put the baby up for adoption. She was raised by adoptive parents, and Stewart finally met Streeter in 2008. He has a daughter, Kimberly, and a son, Sean, with his first wife, Alana Stewart. He has a daughter named Ruby with former girlfriend, Kelly Emberg, Stewart has two children, Renee and Liam, from second marriage to Rachel Hunter. He became a father for the seventh time in 2005 at age 60 to son Alistair Wallace with his then fiance Penny Lancaster. They married in 2007 and had a second son, Aiden, in 2011. For you, it must have been a real treat. Oh yeah, especially um, in your own country. You know, mm. This is where I wanted the number one. I didn't really care about anybody else, not to be disrespectful. Roderick David Stewart was born at 507 Archway Road in Highgate, North London on January 10, 1945, the youngest of five children of Robert Joseph Stewart and Elsie Rebecca Gilbart. His father was Scottish and had been a master builder in Leith, Edinburgh, while Elsie was English and had grown up in Upper Holloway in North London. He had an undistinguished record at Highgate Primary School and failed the 11-plus exam. He then attended the William Grimshaw Secondary Modern School, Stewart left school at age 15 and worked briefly as a silkscreen printer. Spurred on by his father, his ambition was to become a professional footballer. In summer 1960, he went for trials at Brentford FC, a third division club at the time. Stewart began to busk around Leicester Square with folk singer Wiz Jones in 1962 playing the harmonica. For the next year and a half, they took their act on the road, traveling to places like Brighton, Paris, and Barcelona. Gaining a strong interest and liking for American rhythm and blues acts like Sam Cooke and Otis Redding, he got his first professional job as a musician when he joined an R&B group in London called The Dimensions in October 1963 as a harmonica player and vocalist. Over the next few years, he was part of several different musical acts. He joined Jeff Beck Group in 1966 and experienced his first bit of success, releasing two albums with the band and touring the UK and the US. Both albums made it to number 15 on the U.S. charts. At this time, he was becoming known for his nickname, Rod the Mod, due to his punk rock alternative style and look. Solo career beginnings and the faces. 
Stewart joined the band that would be known as The Faces as their lead singer on October 1969. Other members included Ron Wood, Ronnie Lane, Ian McLagan, and Kenny Jones. Simultaneously, Stewart was signed as a solo artist by Mercury Records and began making music independently as well. An Old Raincoat Won't Ever Let You Down was Stewart's first solo album, released in 1969. Faces released their first album, First Step, in early 1970. They were heavily influenced by the Rolling Stones, and the album did well in the UK and quickly earned them a strong live following. Gasoline Alley, Stewart's sophomore album, was released in autumn 1970. Faces launched a US tour that year. Stewart was catapulted into stardom with his 1971 solo album, Every Picture Tells a Story, which contained instant radio-friendly and much-beloved hits like Reason to Believe and Maggie May. The album and singles held the number one spot in both the US and UK simultaneously. Maggie May was part of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 Songs That Shaped Rock and Roll, along with two of Stewart's other hits. Meanwhile, Faces released a second album which saw moderately more success than the first one, and the band toured extensively in 1972. There was growing tension over Stewart's success as a solo artist. Stewart's second album was so well received and reached number two on the US charts and number one in the UK. Ooh La La, the Faces' final album, reached number one in the UK in 1973. Notably, Rod Stewart did not even contribute the vocals for the album's most famous track of the same title. The tension between the band members and Stewart had deepened, and the band parted ways in 1975. You know, to, to get it here is that recognition from your own yeah. people, mm. which is, and it came true. I was really happy. And it's still in the top 20, which I'm yeah. pleased to say. During his career to date, Rod Stewart has sold more than 120 million albums worldwide, which makes him one of the best-selling musicians in world history. Rod Stewart has owned several extremely impressive estates, in 1986, he bought a country estate in England for a little over a million dollars. He sold this property in March 2019 for $6.15 million. In 2013, he bought an 18th century castle on 50 acres for $6.2 million. Rod Stewart's net worth is $300 million. In 1995, he bought an oceanfront house in Palm Beach, Florida for $7.2 million. The house today is worth at least $20 million if it ever came to market. In 1991, he spent $12.1 million, nearly $22 million in today's dollars, for a 20,000-square-foot mansion in a gated community on top of Beverly Hills called Beverly Park. This house is likely worth north of 50 or even $60 million today. In 2013, he bought an 18th-century castle on 50 acres for $6.2 million. These are the cars you might find in Rod Stewart's garage. Lamborghini Miura SV Coupe, Nineteen sixty nine Marcos, Porsche nine eleven Turbo Carrera, nineteen eighty eight Lamborghini QV. Lamborghini Diablo. An Audi Q7. A Bugatti Veyron. A Cadillac XLR, a Harley Davidson, a Range Rover. A Rolls Royce.